All right, so what's going on, Fishaholic? So I just got to the water. Kind of out of breath a little bit because I was running down the beach. You know, I had about like a mile walk. I still probably got about a quarter mile left until I get to the flats. That's where I'm headed. And uh, obviously, we're going to be doing some fly fishing. I just spooled up and put on some new line. Uh, this is a Rio, I think, sink tip intermediate sinking fly line. I don't know if it's the best line that I should have uh, picked up, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. See if it uh, gets the job done. It's, it's really hot out here. But uh, I'm trying to get to the end of the harbor before that sun gets down too low. Uh, you know, I got to the water a little late because I was fishing all day on the big boat. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can knock out a few fish real quick, you know, and then fish a little bit into dark and, uh, you know, maybe get that 18, 20 pounder that you know that I'm after. Whew! I'm wearing the waders and everything. I'm, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm all geared up and I should be in like shorts and water shoes. We got a big storm coming in also for tomorrow. I don't know if you can see how dark the sky is right there. That's the, that's the outer edge of the storm. I think tomorrow and the next day. And uh, that'll probably turn the fish on if there's some around. Especially, if, you know, if there's a bait around, there's gonna be some fish feeding. Looks like we still have a little bit of flood tide left. So I'm actually gonna hop over to the bay side and uh, I'm gonna fish my little sweet spot right on the point. All right, we still got a little bit of flood left. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna start off with this uh, epoxy minnow, you know, the same fly that I've been using. It's like hard to not, it's hard not to use a fly that I've been catching fish on. So I'm probably gonna fish this for a little while, see if I can break the ice. If I can break the ice, then, uh, you know, I'll probably switch to something a little larger. This line's casting pretty well and it's really smooth but uh, I'm not able to cast it out as far as my older line. I definitely could cast a little bit further with the older stuff. The older stuff was just really beat up. You know, it was cutting through my fingers, cutting through my gloves. All right, time to move, nothing here. I think I'm gonna go to the harbor. That was like my initial intention was to fish the flats. Ah, uh, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? I guess let's go to the flats. I'm not seeing any, you know, fish jumping down there or bait, so might as well go that way. These, these freaking bugs are eating me alive right now. This is the spot right here. There's going to be some fish here, definitely. It might be really tiny, but there's going to be fish here. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get a big one. Right now, I kind of smell like a rotting piece of meat carcass or something. I went grocery shopping like four or five days ago and I left my hamburger meat, I guess it fell out of my grocery bag, and I left it in like my dry fishing equipment box on the back of my truck. There's a fish right there. And now I, you know, now my waders smell like junk. I knew there was going to be some fish here. And it's a tiny one. Oh my gosh. Look how small this guy is. This is definitely the smallest pass of the season for me. I thought the last ones I caught here were small. But yeah. My uh, waders smell like rotting carcass of like a deer or something, or of a cow. I'm gonna have to rinse these babies out. Clorox the heck out of them. That was my first cast I caught that guy too, so that could be a curse or there could actually be a lot of fish up here. I actually like fishing this flat more so on a lower tide because then you can walk out a little bit further to where it drops off a little bit. 
but uh, even with the tide all the way up, it's kind of getting close to dark, or it is getting close to dark, it's pretty much dusk. These fish are gonna be pushing up onto this flat looking for something to eat. That's why that little guy was here. Hopefully there's one at least around like 20 inches. You know, there could be a 20 pounder around here. I've seen, um, you know, stripers cruising this flat like 36 inches, which, you know, that could be 15, 18 pounds. You know, maybe 20 if she's fat. But that big striper is gonna be really spooky. So at least I'm not fighting like a high sunny, you know, non-windy day. You know, I got overcast, you know, kind of cloudy. Dusk is coming. It's here, dusk is here. These fish are gonna be up here feeding. Oh, there's another one feeding and looking for something to hit and something to eat. Yeah, there's definitely some fish cruising this flat. Oh my gosh, the stripers are jumping. Wow, this is smaller than I think the first one I caught. Hey, little buddy. Hooked him in the same spot, too, as the first fish. Little striper. A lot of times they cruise up on this flat in like a pack. So if you find one, you're going to find a few of them. Oh, there's another one. Jeez, these fish are stacked up here. They're not big ones, but, you know, I'm working through something here. Ow. A spot like this is kind of funny because you can be catching little tiny schoolies like that and then you can put your fly in front of a little bit larger fish and catch a keeper, you know, or you can catch like a 15 pounder. They're all up here trying to feed on the same bait, most likely sand eels. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's kind of covered by the clouds, but I do have a full moon, like, or almost a full moon tonight. That's why the tide's probably so high and there's so many fish pushed up on this flat. I was thinking I was going to come over here and get like one or two, maybe three, but I knocked out like, I don't know, what, four and five minutes of fishing? Hot and heavy little diaper striper bite. At least I'm, you know, using my new fly line, putting it to the test. Catching some fish. If you guys have any, you know, thoughts on whether or not I made the right decision with this fly line, just, you know, let me know in the comments because I was getting a lot of, oh yeah, there we go. That's a bigger one. But uh, a lot of people were saying I probably should be using a floating fly line. It's a little bit larger fish. I mean, whatever I have, you know, what I have now is working, so. Sometimes you can't change it up. It's <laughs> slightly bigger. See you later, little cutie. Oh my gosh, I feel like they keep getting smaller and smaller. Whew. All right, fishaholics. <laughs> you can laugh at me if you want. Those are probably like the smallest stripers I've ever caught in my entire life. But uh, hey, they were fun, and uh, if you didn't know, I work on a boat out here, you know, the A to K, and uh, you know, I'm hustling and bustling all day, fishing and working, and you know, it's kind of funny that I, I consider fishing work now, and um, you know, it was kind of just nice to get out here, even though I only had like 45 minutes, you know, to an hour before dark to fish, it was just relaxing and nice to get out here. And uh, if I had my tripod and if I had my nightlight, I'd probably still be fishing because like the conditions are perfect and I'm kind of like kicking myself now because I don't have my, you know, my gear, all my gear. So if you guys want to see some night fly fishing videos, let me know. I, I, you know, I'll probably come back to this very same area and probably like fish like dusk and then into dark. 
and um, you know, I guarantee you I'd probably have a shot at like a bigger fish. And you know, I don't know what night fly I should throw. If you guys have any recommendations on, you know, like night flies that you would throw, or you know, would it be better to have a floating line at night, or would it be better to have the sinking line that I just got? Um, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what line is the best to use in like most situations. So if you have any recommendation, recommendations, just post that in the comment section. It's, uh, you know, it's always cool to hear from you guys, or, you know, especially if you know more about fly fishing than I do. And uh, tomorrow I'll probably do some kayaking and hopefully, you know, catch some big fish, you know, out off the lighthouse or wherever I go. And uh, there are a lot of big fish around. It's July, so July is the big fish month. If you're not out here in July or, you know, even August, you know, that's your, that's your best shot for a big fish. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe in my next one I can get that 18, 20 pounder. And never forget, live to fish, fish to live.